today I want to talk a little bit about label reading and um, being able to identify things that are on the label of pet food, particularly kibble. Um, some of these are going to be found in canned food and you may find them in some, some other um, foods as well, even from some companies that um, say that they're a higher quality. Some of them are still using some of these add-ins that are potentially dangerous. So um, really want you to be able to look at a label and say, ooh, geez, you know, steer clear. Um, so, you know, the problem that we have is that there literally are thousands of pet food companies out there and knowing how... Um, knowing how to uh, read the labels and how to choose um, without having to reach out and, and ask somebody else every time um, can, can empower you to be able to choose on your own. Um, one of the places that you can start, uh, well, we've got a couple places, uh, Susan Thixton's Truth About Pet Food. She puts out a list every year. You pay a few dollars for it, but certainly worth it um, because she, uh, she, um, has a list that are foods that she would consider feeding to her own pets. They're human grade. They show their sourcing, uh, very clean foods. Um, so it's worth paying for that. If you sign up for our newsletter at drjudymorgan.com, you'll get an email with the list of foods that are currently things that either I'm feeding my pets or I would feed my pets. My list is not near as extensive as Susan's and doesn't have as much research put into it. Um, and another good place is your little independent pet stores. Not the big box stores, um, but the independent pet retailers generally do a lot more research into what ingredients are in the foods, um, and they can kind of help steer you toward something that would match your budget, would match what you're looking for. If you're looking for non-GMO, oh, we've got Gabby snoring down here. Whether you're looking for non-GMO, organic, um, you know, whether you feel like you absolutely have to feed a kibble, they could maybe steer you in a direction of something that is air-dried or baked, something that would be a little bit healthier. Um, so, uh, definitely um, look toward the expertise that's there. Um, the grocery store and big box store products are literally manufactured for the masses and they give little regard to producing the highest quality foods. So those are not the best places to shop for pet food. Certainly uh, you can get deals on some things if you're you know, just looking for generic uh, products, uh, you know, beds, bowls, toys, that sort of thing. But even even with that stuff, I think that the independent pet stores do a lot better job at um, looking for even toys that aren't filled with lead or um, toxins, flame retardants, that sort of thing. So I, I would definitely... Uh, Rockster is coming to the U.S. They're now, they, they will be at um, Super Zoo. Gwen's going to see them next week. Uh, they're saying probably um, September... Uh, they got their approval back in March, and this is just how long it's taken to get things. Okay, so we're going to start with a long list of things that you want to avoid if you see them on a pet food label. Um, and then we'll talk about some other things that are not actually on the label, but can be in there, and you have to be leery of them. All right, so in no particular order, animal fat. That is a rendered unnamed fat. So it's basically the 4D meats. All those animals that, oh, sorry, Instagram. Um, all those animals that die out in the field or they have cancer or they're sick, they're down, um, those go to the rendering plant. And I was reading one of Susan Thixton's blogs yesterday, and it was from like 2015, and it's something like 4 billion pounds. And she said that number, I think, was from 2012. So you can imagine how many billions of pounds of disgusting, rotting carcasses are melted down at rendering plants every year to go into pet food. So that's pretty disgusting. So when you see something that is just labeled animal or meat, and it doesn't specifically say chicken, or turkey, or beef, or pork. If it doesn't have a specific named animal, if it says animal or meat, run. Those are rendered ingredients. Those are nasty stuff. So it might say animal fat. 
it might say animal digest. So the fat is when they are cooking down the, those carcasses, the fat rises to the top and they skim it off. So that's animal fat. And that is what is used to spray the kibble as a palatant. Remember, we talked about palatants earlier, things to make it taste better. Um, yeah, I love the little emojis. Um, and then animal digest is when they render all that down and then they dry it and they have this dried powder that is basically digested because it's been cooked down and sometimes it will have acid added to it or broken down in other ways to make animal digest. So there are even, there's a probiotic on the market that most veterinarians love made by a large pet food company and the base ingredient in there is animal digest. So if you have an animal with inflammatory bowel disease or has GI upset, that's like the worst thing you could throw at them. And um, if they have any intolerances to certain foods there's no way to know what animals are in there and these products the rendered products they're the ones that also have pentobarbital euthanasia solution in them so you want to run away if you see animal fat if you see animal digest bad news stuff it tastes great to our our animals to our dogs and cats but bad news okay all right, and we're going to talk about some preservatives. BPA. BPA is used in plastics and in can linings. Higher levels of exposure have been linked to various mental health prop conditions, including mental, uh, various health conditions, including mental and behavioral problems, reproductive disorders, diabetes, cancer, and heart disease, and may be associated with hyperthyroidism in cats. So we want to look for BPA free. If we're buying anything in cans, it doesn't necessarily mean they're 100% BPA free, but better chance. Sorry, I'm way behind schedule this morning. I haven't even gotten my coffee. All right, BHA and BHT, these are preservatives that are banned in many countries because they are carcinogens. Um, they can cause kidney damage. There are pet foods that still contain BHA and BHT, even though it's a carcinogen and it's banned in other countries and you're told to put the same thing in the bowl day in and day out. So you're feeding little bits of cancer causing ingredients every single day. Makes perfect sense to me not. Anyway, uh, but these preservatives are also found in some of the topical flea tick and heartworm preventatives. So make sure you read the labels on those as well, because that's a carcinogen that you are applying on your animal every month or however often you're doing these things. Um, carrageenan. I feel like I talked about this one recently, but it's a binder. Um, I think I talked about it yesterday in the cats. Yeah. Uh, so it has been shown to cause intestinal inflammation, IBD, IBS, found in many pet foods, particularly the canned foods. But it's also, as somebody said yesterday, um, no, ProViable is actually good. Um, somebody asked and got it right. Um, so uh, carrageenan can, cause, can lead to cancer because it produces inflammation. Cancer is an inflammatory disease. We know that. Um, so we want to avoid it, but it is also in a lot of uh, human uh, food products, puddings, and um, I like coconut milk, and uh, I have to, a hard time finding coconut milk that doesn't have added carrageenan. Um, corn is usually going to be GMO, and by the way, will probably be loaded with molds. We'll talk about that a little bit uh, as well. Uh, but corn is used as a filler and a cheap protein source. Um, so we want to look for foods that are made with high quality meat sources, not loads of corn or any corn, by the way. And remember, they just changed the name of corn gluten to corn protein. So you can't even tell what the heck's going on in there. Other fillers that you don't want to see in there because they, they really have no nutritive value. Uh, rice bran, oat hulls, because that's just the the shell of the oat uh, grain. Uh, cereal byproducts, soybean hulls, cottonseed hulls, peanut hulls, rice hulls, wheat mill run, modified cornstarch, corn or wheat gluten, which is now protein, and soybean meal. All things that are uh, bad news for our for our dogs and cats. They they provide no nutrition. Soybeans have a lot of phytoestrogens, which interfere with uh, reproductive status, interfere with the um, endocrine system of our animals. 
And uh, legumes and corn, all of those are commonly filled with mold toxins that we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, food dyes. Many food dyes have been shown to be carcinogenic. They cause hyperactivity in children and allergic reactions. They have no place in food other than to make it more appealing. Your dog and cat do not care if the little bits in their food are green, blue, yellow, purple, orange, or red. All they care about is does it taste good? Is it something I want to eat? And by the way, if it wasn't sprayed with those fats and palatants as a kibble, they wouldn't eat it because it would be a bland, boring, dead, brown piece of nothing. Um, so avoid food dyes. So if you see something that has, uh, you know, red dye number four and yellow dye number two, run. Okay. Um, Ethoxyquin. This is a preservative that is carcinogenic. And um, I think this is the one that Susan Thixton alludes to that killed her dog uh, with osteosarcoma that got her started on this whole journey of uh, the truth about pet food. Um, so ethoxyquin can be added to fish out at sea as a preservative. So it may not even be on the label. And that's the problem. So a lot of times if we see fish meal, this was added, the ethoxyquin was added out at sea. And if it's not added at the manufacturing plant, they don't have to put it on the label. So that one is a little scary. Um, it's often associated with development of kidney and liver damage, cancer of the liver, spleen, stomach, or skin, immune deficiency syndrome, blindness, and leukemia. We don't want ethoxyquin in our pet food. Um, glutens we talked about a little bit, but that can be a standalone grain, a stand or in grains or as a standalone ingredient on the ingredient panel. It's used as a binder. It's a common allergen. So yeasty ears, hot spots, skin infections. A lot of times we've got glutens in there that are causing the problem. And I think it's responsible for a lot of the inflammatory bowel disease that we see. All right, sugar in any form, and this can have a lot of different names. So you might see it as corn syrup. You might see it as sucrose, dextrose, sugar, molasses, caramel. Those are all sugars. Guess what? Cats don't even taste sugar. They don't have the taste buds for sugar, and our dogs just don't care. Um, that it contributes to obesity, contributes to diabetes, contributes to inflammation. So pancreatitis contributes to yeast infections. Um, artificial sweeteners like xylitol and sorbitol are toxic, yet we find them still in some veterinary products. There's a water additive that has xylitol in it. Beats me why they do that, but I see a lot of uh, pet products, particularly the really low-grade treats that are in the grocery stores that have sorbitol. Why would we feed that to our, it's toxic, yet it's included. Uh, so we're back to the unnamed things, meat and bone meal or meat or animal byproducts. Those are unnamed. So if you see chicken byproducts, well, that's the parts of the chicken other than the muscle meat. So it could include the organs. There could be some good stuff in there, you know, heart, liver, kidney, spleen. That's good stuff that's included in there. Unfortunately, even though the definition of byproducts excludes the feces inside the intestines, it gets in there. So those byproducts, unfortunately, like if we, if we are, if a, if a human grade pet food, actually it's hard to even make it human grade, but if you're, if you have a high quality pet group, pet food, they will list like duck liver, duck heart, um, duck kidneys, whatever. They'll list the individual ingredients and it won't just say byproducts. So if we're seeing just animal byproducts, um, run. Same with meat and bone meal. Um, here's a good one. MSG. It's a common allergen often listed on the label as a lot of different names. So it could be listed as hydrolyzed protein, protein isolate, texturized protein, natural flavor, autolyzed yeast, hydrolyzed yeast, yeast extracts, soy extracts, soy concentrate, sodium caseinate, calcium caseinate, monopotassium glutamate, glutamate or glutanic acid, disodium inosinate or guaylate. That's all MSG. Just labeled a bunch of different ways and it's just used for flavoring. Um, and our pets don't need it, by the way. It causes problems for us. It causes problems for them. Um, menadione sodium bisulfate is a synthetic version of vitamin K, highly toxic in high doses. 
Hazard information regarding menadione states the substance is toxic to kidneys, lungs, liver, and mucous membranes. But it's in pet food. Repeated or prolonged exposure to the substance can produce target organ damage. So particularly for the people who are making those vitamin mixes or adding them in when making the pet food, they're exposed to high levels of it. But again, if you're putting the same thing in your pet's bowl day after day after day, meal after meal, which is what you're told to do, this is the kind of stuff that is going in the bowl. Sodium nitrite. It's an approved preservative in pet foods, but can be toxic in high doses by causing a blood disorder called methemoglobin. Its accumulation over time in the system has been linked to cancer, especially when it's combined with ascorbic acid, which is vitamin C, and alpha tocopherol, which is vitamin E, which is a natural preservative that's being uh, added a lot. Um, those are common natural vitamin sources and preservatives. But then when we put in sodium nitrite as another preservative with it, we end up with toxins. Stuart has something to say in the other room. He's mad. Um, so I apologize for the barking dog. Okay. Uh, need a place to put that. Sodium hexametaphosphate. It promises to reduce tartar, so this is in a lot of those uh, VSOC-approved dental products. Promises to reduce tartar has been shown to cause skin irritation, kidney disease, and retarded growth, uh, and it is found in some pet foods as well as dental products. Sodium tripolyphosphate, used as a preservative, insecticide, fungicide, and rodenticide. Harmful if, hailed, uh, if inhaled, a skin irritant, but considered safe to eat. Sure, and it's also a neurotoxin. I think I'd like it in my bowl every day. Um, it is found in some bags of certain breeds and cans of other breeds that are considered actually high quality. So look for that sodium tripolyphosphate. Um, sodium metabisulfite can trigger severe allergic reactions in dogs. Exposure can also cause nervous system damage and issues with circulation. It is used as a preservative and a bleaching agent. So again, look in some of those dental products. Um, rendered fat, that goes back to the animal fat that we talked about. Um, it could also be labeled as tallow or lard. Um, it's generally rancid and filled with fat-soluble toxins, toxins that are stored in the fat and don't go away. Um, vegetable oil. It's going to be GMO. It's going to be high omega-6. So particularly if it's a corn or soybean oil that's added, we want to look for higher quality oils like flaxseed oil, olive oil, um, fish oil. But we have to be a little careful with that because fish oil that is added to uh, extruded products, it's going to be cooked at a very high heat. So then it becomes rancid and then it's, it's pro-inflammatory. So um, propylene glycol, we see this in a lot of treats, but also in some low quality pet foods. It's used as a preservative and a humectant, which, uh, those treats that are sort of semi-moist or the pet foods that are semi-moist morsels, um, have propylene glycol. It's toxic to cats and banned in cat food. It is banned for food in many countries, but not ours. Um, it can cause Heinz body anemia, which is, uh, cats are more prone to that, which is why it's banned for the kitties. So we want to avoid semi-moist foods that have propylene glycol in them. It can cause intestinal cancer, and studies show links to nervous system damage from propylene glycol. Everybody ready for breakfast or lunch now? All right, so now we're going to talk about some studies. Um, so there was a study done in Sweden that uh, showed that when young animals were fed cooked and processed foods, they initially appeared to be healthy. However, as the animals reached adulthood, they began to age more quickly than normal and also developed chronic degenerative disease systems, symptoms. A control group of animals raised on raw foods aged less quickly and were free of degenerative disease. In nature, we see wild animals eating entirely enzyme-rich raw foods being free of the degenerative diseases that afflict humans and our pets. Um, so let's see. So another study done by Dr. Francis Potinger 
tried an experiment on several hundred cats. You've probably heard about them. He divided them into two groups, fed one group their natural diet of raw meat and the other group a man-made diet of cooked pet food. He carried on his experiment through three generations, which is amazing. Nobody would do that today. The cats that were fed their normal uncooked diet thrived. The cats that were fed a cooked diet developed the same diseases and required the same medical treatment as humans. So... Another veterinarian uh, writes that commercial pet food, even some of the expensive brands, have had their nutrients altered, adulterated, devitalized, and destroyed by heat, processing, coloring, preservatives, and other chemicals. All that list that we just talked about. Uh, feeding your animals such food on a regular basis causes waste toxins to accumulate in the blood, lymphs, lymphatics, and tissues, which continues to weaken the immune system and renders our pets susceptible to chronic disease, which is why we are seeing so much chronic disease. Um, let's see. Another uh, person writes that processed foods and drugs have seriously depleted the natural vitality and immune system of our pets, whereas large amounts of red meat can cause cancer in humans, mostly because of how we cook it. A lack of raw red meat in an animal's diet can lead to serious health problems. Um, animals require the enzymes, amino acids, and other nutrients in the raw meat in order to stay healthy. Um, animals need at least 30% raw fat. We talked about that yesterday with our kitty cats and their systems are not designed to handle cooked meat and cooked fat. And it's those cooked fats that lead to pancreatitis along with sugars and carbs and all the other things that we're feeding them that we shouldn't. Um, Let's see. So let's talk about um, legumes and grains in food. So the the highest quality legumes and grains go to the human food industry. The lower quality grains, so they're graded, um, the lower quality grains and grains and legumes that have molds in them get sent to pet food. Now, even the moldy grains and legumes are not supposed to go to pet food, but these come into these pet food manufacturing facilities in tractor trailer loads. So if you are a, a, a supplier and you are trying to get rid of your moldy grain, where are you going to put it? You're going to put it in the middle of that tractor trailer load and you're going to surround it with slightly better grains. Um, they test these, um, or they're supposed to test these tractor trailer loads of grains when they come into the factory. They're supposed to test them for molds and quality. But what they do is just get a little tiny sample. They don't sample the whole tractor trailer. That's impossible to do. So they get a little tiny sample. Well, are they getting all the way down into the middle? That's pretty impossible to do. So they test a little tiny sample and go, yeah, it looks good to me, if they bother to test at all. The problem is that those molds, while the, the mold itself might be killed uh, in the high heat process and the same with the bacteria might be killed in the high heat process, but they release toxins. And those mold toxins include aflatoxin causes liver failure and cancer, ocratoxin, fum fumonisin, and there are others. They contaminate the milk and meat of the animals they're fed to as well. So if these moldy grains are being fed to, um, cattle, then the meat has those endo, uh, has those uh, aflatoxins and the milk is going to have the aflatoxins in it as well. So we don't want this going to our, our um, food producing animals any more than we want it going to our pets. So exposure to these toxins, even at low doses, can wreak havoc on your dog system, causing anemia, liver or kidney failure, cancer, and premature death. Nervous system disorders, including seizures, autoimmune disease, allergies, vomiting, diarrhea, and immune suppression. Um, okay. So then we also have the 4D meats. Remember I talked about those go by the tractor trailer load or dump truck load of dead decaying animals. We saw a bunch spilled on the New York highway last week. Um, so they're highly contaminated with bacteria because they're not refrigerated. So it's 95 degrees out and you've got rotting carcasses on the back of a truck and then they're dumped in a, a lot outside at the rendering plant and then get scooped up by, you know, front end loaders and dumped into the rendering vat. So they're highly contaminated with bacteria, including Clostridia, Salmonella, E. coli, Staph aureus. Some of those might sound familiar to you. And when the bacteria are killed during the rendering or cooking process, they release endotoxins. Um, they're described as moderately toxic and fatal to animals in large doses. 
Endotoxins cannot be destroyed through heat or acid and remain in the food. Endotoxins can cause liver damage. They have also been linked to obesity and diabetes, shock, arthritis, asthma, organ failure, hemorrhage, and hypertension. Probiotics have been shown to reduce the uptake of endotoxins in the gut and decrease levels of inflammation. So um, if we're worried that, you know, if you're feeding a dry kibble and it's got a rendered product in it, then by all means, add some high quality probiotics. Um, Another study showed that fish oil supplementation decreased endotoxin levels in the blood by 50%. So um, fish oil as well. Okay. Um, Oh, and um, if you're buying kibble and it says it has probiotics in it, the probiotics are killed during the heat process. So it kind of depends if they're added as a spray on afterwards, but even during storage that are going to die. Um, So you're not getting a good probiotic load on kibble. Um, Manufacturers try to add back some of the lost nutritional value in uh, extruded products with synthetic vitamins and minerals so that their formulas comply with AFCO standards and they can call their food complete and balanced on the label. Studies show the synthetic vitamins can cause more harm than good because they are seen as foreign invaders to the body and a lot of animals will develop allergies, in uh, food sensitivities, and autoimmune disease second to those synthetics. Okay. Um, So there's another study done that showed that um, uh, they took animals and fed them homemade food. Um, It says based on similar food as a family uh, would eat. And then animals were fed industrial food. And they compared the average life expectancy. The ones fed the homemade food had an average age of 13.1 years. And those fed industrial or commercial food had an average age of 10.4 years. That's 32 months, folks. That's almost three years difference between being fed a whole food diet versus a commercial diet. uh, highly processed diet. And the animals that were fed mixed, homemade plus some commercial, reached an average of 11.4. So we still they still added a whole year just by putting some homemade or whole foods into the bowl. Um, so it's the quality of the ingredients that are used, the basic protein quantity, and faculty to assimilate vitamins and minerals when using natural products. Um, Food processing requires physical treatments like high temperature, extrusion, flaking, and chemical treatments like hydrolysis, coloring, and additives that we talked about. Um, So the quote from this study is, taking into consideration the importance of the diet and its quality shown as a dominant factor for the dog's life expectancy, we think that it is essential that all parties concerned, for instance, lab researchers, manufacturers, veterinarians, proprietors, come together and talk in order to give complete satisfaction to the animal's nutritional requirements and improve. This way, it's well-being. So if we could have a conversation, and this is so hard to do, we're having a conversation, but we can't get the, the corporate greed taken out of this equation. And the corporate greed, unfortunately, is who is educating our veterinarians. And that combination is leaving our pets in a very bad place because we are feeding them toxins. And and you are told to feed them toxins in the bowl twice a day, every day, with no variation. They tell you, don't give them table scraps. You'll wreck the balance of their diet. Don't listen to that crap, please. Please.